Here is pastel only. And then obviously pastel and marker, and then this one's a mixture of uh, both. And uh, with pastel, you can decide. You kind of get different effects. You could go all pastel and it's kind of a softer look and adding in some shadow with the marker. So it kind of goes uh, different ways. And um, you get different effects. With this one, I happened to have a, a marker that matched up well with the pastel. So a lot of times when you're <coughs> combining pastel and markers, you might have to mix some colors to um, get it uh, similar. If you're if you're layering colors and there's too much of a difference, if you have like a like you know, the really dark green and then I have this light green, it, this transition might look a little bit too harsh, and so it, it might look a little weird. So this is it's pretty close um, here on this one. So I'll just do a, a, a quick. I'll do the sphere and then go into maybe doing the shape um, again. For the sake of time, I just use a stencil. Fine tip. So you need something to shave off the pastel with. Um, you could even use just the blunt end of an uh, exacto knife. And so it gets kind of messy, but you don't really want to. Like after you do it blow, um, like hold it up to your face and go, because then you'll breathe in and you get pastel taste in your mouth. And it's not that good. So, um, and one thing you can do too to get the pastel to go further, um, you can use like baby powder or I just went to like Walgreens and got some like this powder here. So you can add that to the color and then it'll just kind of make it go a little bit longer. It does lighten it up a little bit, so you might need to oops, uh, add a little more color. So, this one, I'm just gonna follow the shape. It's kind of like similar to the marker demos that we did that are still up there. Um, this is this might be if you're trying to do something that's like a maybe like a gumball or something. I don't know. And so I'm just kind of working it in and I'm going a little bit over the line. And so I'm leaving a little bit of highlight on there. You can always come back in and add that. Now, so just really quickly come in here. The other, um, the other technique is with the marker. Um, so you can do a little test to mix colors. I did a little test here to make sure it matched up pretty good. And again, I'm going to use this to lay in my core shadow. So again, I'm going to be kind of like turning my or keeping the marker um, vertical and then swinging to the side. It's almost kind of like calligraphy, I guess. So 
and if you don't hit it exactly right the first time, just touch it up a little bit. And again, I didn't go all the way to the edge, just left a, a little bit. And I should have enough color here. marker paper too for this since I'm combining both. So maybe this one might be more like if I had the, the shadow at like do this um, so before Photoshop this is how you got gradients to go now you mm -hmm. can do your brush tool and make it you know, um, hard, bring the hardness down and just kind of brush over stuff or take and make a block and actually put in using the gradient tool so and then this is actually what I'm doing here is pre Photoshop too so these are my layers <laughs> Some, sometimes you don't really think about like like why are there layers? So, this is this is Photoshop. So. And um, one thing, just always rotating my page so I'm doing my lines this way. If I'm trying to go quick, I uh, will you know, just try and do it all in one direction or just leave the page, but since I'm not in super rush. have a really light guidelines and to get with this pen even though if, if I use it vertically just straight down I get the most ink but if you if I turn it to the side I kind of get um, this pen's kind of running low but you can just get some like really nice light scratch lines um, how's it going down there all right mm. cool. Alright, so got this laid out. What's what's nice is that you know, always you're gonna um, unless you mix this with uh, Bestine or another thinner, which we'll do later, your markers can always be able to be darker than your pastel. So for this drawing I laid in marker here and here and then flipped it over and then did another layer of marker on the excuse me, on the back on the darkest side. There's some marker there. So, again, going with the shape of the object and um, using the idea of having a light edge up against a dark edge so you know when where things are turning. You can even look like at this table, look at the edge. It's really bright up top, and then when it gets to the side, it's, it's dark. So you can see that it, it's kind of moving down. So. fully coloring book style. Um, so 
so I to make it darker. So it's a little bit, a little bit darker slightly. And now for this top part, I'm just gonna lay in. I mean, of course you can see the line. You'll always, I mean, if you work it really hard, you could get it to transition perfectly. But just for a quick uh, rendering, I put in a few, few lines and then stop, so I can do my gradient over to the other side. And I'm not putting my marker here because um, you you could you could put it there but you want to make sure you leave um, a white space there so it's differentiated but I'm gonna go from this side and then transition over because it makes it really prominent that there's this this edge here and then it, it sh uh, shoots down so it's kind of like over exaggerating what it uh, really would look like got a little bit of a, a dark spot there which you'll see but it'll be okay people people will get the get the point so some of my green if you don't like that sound good luck using pastels <laughs> add more green to it. Uh, you can always add, if you have a darker green or sometimes a little bit of black will darken up the color. I think this should be sufficient. But I added a couple little strokes going this way just to even it out. You can kind of see it on this top edge. Right. And so I'm, my uh, pastel stroke is going with, again, with the perspective and the shape. And just working it in over the marker. Leave the pastel a little bit over. It's kind of hard to notice, but since I have my eraser here, I suggest cotton squares over cotton balls, so they're easier to use for this. And so I have three um, instruments I can use. One is um, this is like a jelly roll white. You can uh, that comes in tons of colors. This works. Um, this is a uh, aquarelle, so it's a water. It's like a water color type of pencil, but it's you can write on like plastic and metal, and it sticks quite well onto the page. And then also it's going through my old art supplies found white charcoal, and that can work as well. And there's even um, you could use a white paint, like Copic makes a white pigment that you can use with a brush. You see a lot of, if you've ever seen like, uh, like Overhauling, you've seen that Chip Foos, he draws cars and they look amazing. You'll use um, <coughs> white paint for the highlights and uh, so try a little bit of this, the Jelly Roll pen. I think I've had it since this Yeah. Was cool. No, I didn't. You were cool with the edge And 
So I just added a little bit of a little bit of white on there on this edge and this corner on there. And if you wanted to, you could even add like a little speck, like a little dot on the edge, just to maybe there's a, an outside kind of light poking on it, just to uh, give us some interest. I think on that one I just added one more one more line for the uh just gonna show that it's at the bottom. Again, for me, because your arm is you know, it's attached to your body, and if you were to dr try to draw a straight line your tendency is to do a curve. And so when I rotate my page so that I'm I'm always even though I have a, you're going to have a tendency to, to, uh, to do a curve, so why not turn the page so that you're working with your body as opposed to turning it this way and trying to go like that, which is kind of feels weird. So I'm always um, rotating my page to make it, make it easier and making the page work for me, you know. So there's a... So it's for a quick cube exercise. So with this assignment, um, I made it um, to be kind of like an in-between like structure and possibly a like play school or Lego copy machine or something. But I wanted to put in um, some round corners um, uh, cut out. So maybe this could be like a where the paper comes out or it's like a loading dock to a building. And then if you have a if you have a cube and we were to look at this edge like look at the cube straight on like if I was looking right down the edge um, right down if I were to draw the edge just straight down it would look like this. So you have this like line or a point that defines that edge. So it's like dink straight down. But if you have a rounded edge, a cylinder running down the edge, and so let's see, and then those two lines are defined by the where that circle is tangent to the edge. So, so we're, to, we're to be drawing out a and this was like a some quick like a touch screen. So. <clears throat> so, let's say this was like my, like your iPhone that's a block. It's not a rounded edge, maybe it's like the old model. And uh, so to make like a screen reflection, if you hold up your phone to light, you can know sometimes like by the lights being like this, it'll create like a cross plane on your um, screen. So then you can, you can even add in um, Could add in a little bit of pastel, and then just lay lay some down, and then and lay that on top. But then you can come back with your uh, come back with your erase. And then one last bit. So if I have this this design here and with doing pastels on this 
get some big post-it notes. Um, I recommend to use this and not artist tape. And you can block off areas and then not have to worry about your over the like overflow. So I'll make a quick um, pastel backing on this this guy here. Of course, you, you can't always erase, but if you got the tools, why not? So, um, oops. Yeah, watch out for your stuff. Pastel gets kind of messy. So I have a green object. What do you think would be a good color red we're getting close to the holidays okay <laughs> <laughs> but i mean on the color wheel right uh, red is i mean uh, the inverse of green we want to think about when you're doing backing you're not doing green and then another shade of green behind it um so you had to have something to pop how about this is like red orange Let me try this one out So you could do another um, technique. This red is kind of um, this is close. Yeah, you could end up combining the marker and pastel, but I'm just going to do all uh, all pastel here. If you want, you can could darken this up a little bit and then add some line strokes to the, uh, the back. That's how it would be done uh, you know, back in the day. But it's still a, a cool technique. If um, it's a lot of discussions on how people perceive hand renderings versus 3D models and having like, the human touch and being able to like, see like time, maybe time invested um, in these and I mean, everybody's different, but I think it looks pretty cool if you could show up and go, this is what you're, um, I don't know what that would be. Uh, but, huh? Router. Your, oh, what? Looks like a router. Router? Wireless router. Thank you. Oh, wireless router, yeah. So this is my concept for your, we're getting close to holiday season. And so, yeah. But, uh, yeah, having that, like, you know, hand touch to it is pretty cool, so, Yeah. And so you can do that too with with all these. So this was one that was pastel and um, did some like green marker on it. And I didn't add a background yet, so I put add background. So I can pass this one. Um, this was one that um, I didn't finish out in class, but it has pastel. There's marker underneath this, and then did the like, sky. Um, looks a little different in person, but 
And again, you want when you're choosing colors to make sure, like, if you're designing a product, think about who your target audience is. So you might not want to do like a rainbow sky for some company that's like really serious or I don't know, whatever the industry is. So make sure to pick your um, pick your colors. And then this one just shows a little bit of the construction lines, how I got stuff going on it. So, and eventually you get to the point where you won't even need, you won't need to put two dots and draw out lines. You can just kind of know that somewhere out in this area is one vanishing point. And because a lot of times you're not gonna be able to fit it on the page to make it look the right size, it'll be like way out here. More, more cylinders going through the object. So, so there's another one going that way. Yeah. And then you do it on another one on that, on this side too. And also on the top, going down. So basically what it ends up, uh, what it will end up looking like is you'll have this edge, um, coming down and turning in, and then this one um, turning in. So let me, uh, let me redo one that's a little bit closer to scale. So. Okay, so. If I ended, yeah, so it starts to end up to look like you end up with like this, like kind of like if you took a triangle and it was a sticker and you put it on a sphere, it would be like like this um, uh, this shape. more exact than I'm doing, but you'll get the, yeah, you'll get the idea. So, yeah, all the lines are, whoops, they're not lining up perfectly, but 